Welcome everybody here to TLC. I am Jimmy Boy alongside Christopher Pierce and Kyle Matthews. Gentlemen, it's a bit been a heck of a year for, for IWE and it's it's tough to say that we're almost ready for 2024. It definitely has been. We are here TLC. We do not mean tender loving care either. TLC, tables, ladders, chairs. Oh my, we're going to see it all tonight. And of course, this is going to make things interesting in terms of, we talk about usually in our traditional matches, the champion's advantage uh, could go one way or the other for the champs here tonight with their belts hanging in the balance. Getting our first match of the night through the IWE Women's Championship on the line here, Alexa Bliss making her way to the ring, and uh, she was involved in probably the most chaotic women's title match that I've ever witnessed here in IWE, and I think it probably be said uh, for you guys. Well, with Alexa Bliss making her way to the ring, Kyle, we know you're in a state of shock, but Jimmy and I are in a state of shock still from what we saw last pay-per-view when Stephanie McMahon made her in-ring debut here in IWE and walked out the champion. I mean, who saw that coming? I mean, it's, yeah. a real, it's really tough to say. I mean, it's, Stephanie McMahon is one of those that you never really expect to win a lot unless she has outside help. And I mean, I guess if you call the cashing in of the Money in the Bank outside help, she walked away with her title. But I can tell you, it definitely made things easier for her when it quickly became a triple threat match. Yeah, Alexa Bliss entered that match as the women's champion. It started out as just a standard one-on-one -on -one match between her and Stephanie McMahon. And then in the middle of the match, for the first time ever in IWE history, we had a cash in. It's Candice LeRae cashed in Money in the Bank, making it a triple threat match. Stephanie McMahon was able to pin Candice LeRae and walk out with the women's title. Alexa Bliss wasn't even involved in the decision and lost the title. So, uh, very, very well deserving, I believe, of uh, Alexa getting a, a uh, I guess you could say a rematch tonight. Only, a, okay. only, only one on one. Guys, social media has been a buzz here this past month, and I'm going to try and get your guys' take on it. You mentioned it, Kyle. We've never seen somebody cash in Money in the Bank in the middle of a 1v1 matchup and turn it into a triple threat here in IWE. It's something we've never seen before. Stephanie McMahon is one of those people that has that sense of authority, can kind of throw her weight around. Was there something that went on backstage between Stephanie McMahon and Candice LeRae where Candice was... Not necessarily forced, but coerced into making it a triple threat, making the odds better for Stephanie to walk out the champion. I've been hearing a lot of rumblings, and there might be something to it. Who knows? Well, well they're, they're, money they're talk. Very well, yeah, there very well could be. I mean, Stephanie McMahon doesn't really, at least not to my knowledge, have any power here in IWE, but eh, who knows? Money talks. That's all I can say is money talks. Got the stacks to back it up. Stephanie McMahon, the champion. Look at her goat in the crowd here. Referee Ernest Wright ready for this match. It's the second time I can remember Stephanie McMahon holding a women's title. She was a WWE women's champion back in 2000. So it's been quite a while. And there's Alexa Bliss, the former IWE women's champion, a five-time champion in WWE. And that's what they're going for right there, the title. But would Alexa Bliss last month have retained the title against Stephanie McMahon? We'll never know the answer to that. But now we're going to finally, more than likely, get that 1v1 matchup since the Money in the Bank briefcase no longer looms backstage. Not to mention, also, this is an extreme rule. Exactly. Boy, these two love goading the, cro goading the crowd here. I think that our crowd are... are fans were just as shocked when Stephanie McMahon won the title as we were, and I think that that, uh, that sense of astonishment has carried over here into TLC. It's something I never thought I would see in IWE, Stephanie McMahon not only wrestling, I mean, that was that's a shock in itself, but actually being a champion, I just uh, still in shock over that. Alexa Bliss trying to fight back here against the champion. It's been two-sided here. These guys have put up about an even effort between them two. 
Uh, but Stephanie Ranch, she's the taller of the two, the tallest of the two women here, so she's got a bit of a power advantage over Alexa. You mentioned it, Jimmy, the extreme rule stipulations, so you gotta wonder at what point is this gonna go Coming outside the ring? Yeah, early cover there. But how, at what point is this gonna go outside of the ring? At what point do, do these two women go under the ring, try and get those weapons that are legal in this matchup? Oh, there's the answer right well, there. Alexa Bliss is already it. headed out. Alexa gonna get here. And a kendo stick. Definitely not even giving her a chance to use it. I look at Stephanie just laughing at Alexa Bliss. Stephanie certainly feels that she's in control of this matchup. Very confident. Again, continues to work on that right arm. Kind of zeroed in on that elbow about five minutes ago, and she's continued to kind of have that be her main target. It's an interesting strategy there, focusing on, on the right arm of Alexa Bliss. Alexa is actually left-handed, so going after the weaker going after the weaker arm. Oh! Nice reversal there by Alexa. Now Alexa gonna go back under the ring, looking for something here. Got a oh, sledgehammer. Wow. Oh, the irony. Yeah. The use the kendo stick, so how about a stick with a chunk of iron this on is, the end of it? This is something that Stephanie's husband has has used to his, his to his advantage several times over his over the course of his career. Oh gosh, that was a backbreaker by Alexa Bliss, but the back of Stephanie's head hit that ring post. Tell you what, Alexa Bliss may you know may have may be at the uh, disadvantage in terms of height, but she is known as five feet of fury, and we are seeing it right now. Uh, you read my mind because I was about to make that same comparison. And she can do as much damage to Stephanie on the outside of the ring as she wants, but the pinfall submission has to take place inside the ropes. So at what point does Alexa Bliss think she's got the champ worn down enough to be able to attempt Ooh, a pinfall? Right into the barricade. There's one thing that Alexa's working on too, that's Stephanie McMahon's back. You take, you take the back out, you take the power away. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Alexa just stomping a mud hole in her and trying to walk it dry. Is Alexa Bliss a part of the Blackpool Combat Club? Because that kind of looked like what they used to do. Absolutely. When's Alexa going to say? Oh, my goodness. The back of Stephanie's head onto the mat. Alexa Bliss certainly not happy about the events that took oh. place in our last pay-per-view as McMahon's head bounces right off the steel ring post. I, I, I can't, I, I cannot help but sit, but picture Vince every time you say McMahon. It's just like, like I know we're watching the women's match, but every time I hear McMahon, it's just like, oh, is Vince here? Yeah. You talk about Alexa and the frustration of what happened in the last pay-per-view. That's certainly got to be fueling the fire and the fact with this being an Extreme Rules match, I would have thought if it was just a traditional match, that would maybe be oh, to a different advantage. Wow, a spear there by Stephanie. Oh! I would have thought that that would have been a disadvantage to Alexa based the three, on the fact that she can't three. advantage if there's, a no dis if there's a disqualification that could be had, but with it being extreme rules, there are no DQs, so I think right now that this definitely is in favor of Alexa Bliss just based on where she is mentally with what happened losing her championship. Uh, I, I don't know where she's at mentally. She just took three straight kendo stick shots to the face. Oh, All this with us. Cover. Roll up here. Is that going to be it? No, Stephanie just escaped. I can tell you, this is going to come down. Oh, there she goes. Oh, another, oh, I thought she was going to go for another roll up there, but instead just delivered a, I don't know what that would necessarily be called, backslide DDT or something. I don't know. I feel like it's going to come down to whoever can really land their finishers. Their finishers first. Let's thinking about something here. Bliss oh, is back in control most of this matchup. There he goes. Yes, nailed it. Bliss, is that going to be it? Referee it's counting it. two. And it yes, is. Sir. That's about the Stephanie McMahon match we expected. Well, Stephanie Alexa spends Bliss. a month at the top of the heap, and just like that, Alexa Bliss says, hey, if we hadn't had that triple threat last, last month, I still would have been continuing on my championship reign. Alexa had extra motivation coming into this match and uses it to perfection, walking out with the gold once again. Two-time IWE Women's Champion and Stephanie McMahon walking to the back just... Uh, Very disappointed. Yeah.
I mean, you gotta give it to her. She put up a valiant effort here tonight. Nothing to be ashamed about. Oh, no. Yeah, as we're getting ready to switch gears here, Alexa Bliss once again the women's champion. Up next, our tag team championships are on the line in a TLC match. But it's not just an ordinary TLC match. It's a triple threat tag team. Uh, tag team uh, TLC match. I, words, you'll, you'll I can't get it speak eventually, Jimmy. Stroke. It's happening. Live on the two members of Imperium, Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci. Very accomplished tag team in their own right in NXT. Looking to make a name for themselves here in IWE. A great opportunity tonight. I would never put these two at a disadvantage in any tag team matchup, but these guys seem to be more of the technical type mat style wrestlers. I'm not necessarily certain if they're going to be able to adapt to the TLC type rules that will be applied in this tag team triple threat. Well, we're gonna find out. Now here comes, speaking of, you know, adapting, here comes Gallows and Anderson. They are the champions. The championship belt hanging above the ring already. But these guys have just almost pretty much laid waste to all of their challengers. The last month I think was their biggest test and they've, they, they you know, they ended up succeeding with flying colors. It was just amazing to watch them take it to the Brothers of Destruction. And to your point, Jim, they've turned back all comers. And yeah, these guys have been pretty much unbeatable. I think they lost the title one time. Got well, they got back it back the next, next month, yeah. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, ever since the Bullet Club is, uh, you know, became a part of IWE, they have been on quite the roll over the last few months, and Gallows and Anderson are joining the Bullet Club. Yeah, I mean, just Omega. Kenny Omega and um, Adam Page as well, too. Michael Norman has a couple of championship runs as well, so the Bullet Club has held almost all the gold at one point. Wait a minute. Oh, this is interesting. Johnny Gargano. Gargano walking out alone here. Who, who, who could possibly be his tag team partner? Johnny Gargano, Gargano no was, stranger. Uh, Johnny tag Wrestling. Team. Yeah, uh, nickname uh, nickname uh, Johnny Wrestling. We saw him uh, battle for the United States Championship. Came up short. Former tag team champion down in NXT. And so he's no stranger to holding tag team gold, but who could possibly, who could he possibly be teaming up against? Or Had a couple teaming of up with He's been with a couple of tag team factions in his career. Could, could it be Dexter Loomis? <laughs> Dexter Loomis, okay, Austin I tell Theory, you what, yeah, Tommaso yeah, Ciampa. Oh yeah, I forgot about Austin Theory. Well, as soon as I saw the way the Titan Tron there, I almost wondered if we were going to see Austin Theory come out there with Gargano, but he didn't, so... It makes me, it really makes me wonder. Tag Kevin Owens a couple of times as well here over the last couple of months in WWE, so we right, I mean, some right, options did. here. Alright, well, let's see who's it gonna be. Oh boy. Well. Oh, I bet, is this a this? reunion I smell? I'm telling you, I believe, yes, it is Tommaso Ciampa. And boy, I mean, you talk about history that these two have, not only as a tag team, you know, at DIY done in NXT, former tag team champions there, but boy, they had this uh, very brutal fight forever type of rivalry in NXT as well. I mean, I, 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 I love how to say both good and bad history. I say, I, I love how his good for us I, all the way around, but. I, I love how Champa's mask just, just it's just above his beard. His beard just protrudes out from the bottom. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be that way. Both of these guys in in singles runs are both former NXT champions as well, and I think these two actually fought over the NXT title at one point. At oh yeah, they did. So. This has to be one of the better teams in professional wrestling today. My Gano, as I mentioned, he battled for the U.S. Championship a couple of months ago. Tommaso Ciampa, I think it was about four or five months ago, he was involved in 
was it six pack challenge or a fatal four away? One or the other for the IC. I think it was a title. fatal four away. Yeah. So we've not seen these two tag up yet in IWE up to this point. You mentioned Kyle the history they've had. It's been a while. We'll have to see if the magic can be rekindled here. So three established tag teams here in this triple threat TLC match. It's all yeah, be nothing fun, thrown man. together. I don't know. Sometimes I like our thrown together tag teams. Well, I do too. But then you always seen... have that question mark about: Is there going to be chemistry? There's no doubt with all three of these teams. Well, that's two people eliminated from the Royal Rumble. Because and the yes. only question, the only question would be between Gargano and Champa. I mean, you know. It's, uh, the history between those two, can they, uh, you know, put all that aside and become a team again? We shall see tonight, but... You can see just barely the top of your screen. That's the Tag Team Championships hanging there. Got to climb a ladder, get up there, retrieve the belts. I'm almost wondering the size of Luke Gallows. Is he going to need a ladder? He can just reach up there and grab them. Oh, I'm sure. He might, need, he might need a step stool, maybe, but that's about... With all 50 competitors in the ring, we've got Imperium. Speaking of Gallo, look, Gallo, look at the strength. He's just. Hey, how many Garganos can you bench press? God, how how, how what is Gar, what is Gargano's weight? Like what 180 maybe? I don't know. I, I might be able to bench press Johnny Gargano's son. And that's about it. But, uh... <laughs> oh, look at that oh, already on the ladder. That's Champa. On the and or a gallows, yeah. Can't really see what's going on here. Oh, uh... well, we know neither one of them grabbed the belts. Oh, wow. They're fighting up there. That Ludwig yeah. Kaiser, I believe, just had that nice suplex on Gargano. Thing. I think Gallows was up, oh, and there we go. Yeah, that is champion. Oh, this be over already. Look at this. Oh. With Johnny Gargano, and uh, I believe that's. Uh, oh, he's holding on to the belt. Uh, wow. An electric chair. We're going to probably be seeing a lot of that, but this is a TLC match, and look at Anderson out there with the table. But you saw how quickly Kaiser and Gargano, they were fighting each other, noticed Gallows was up there at the top of the ladder, and immediately became allies. That's going to happen here no, in this uh, type of matchup. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Yeah, and I want to take a moment. To... Go ahead. Sorry, Kyle, my bad. I was going to say short-lived alliances. You're going to see a lot of that here in this match. But yeah, you were saying? Oh, that Look ladder. I like the that ladder that Champa just brought out. Well, we've got it precariously perched over there too, but I want to take a moment and say, gentlemen, yeah, you know, this this being the la the September pay per view of 2023, we're we're back in the Wrestle uh, WrestleMania, we're back in Royal Rumble season. Well, it is the start of the road to WrestleMania. Right now, superstars that are eligible for the Royal Rumble. I think we've seen uh, about a dozen in the last few months get thrown over the top rope, so they certainly can't be in it. Oh, speaking of which, look at that lap. Oh, boy, I thought, I thought uh, Luke Gallows was going to powerbomb. I believe that's Tommaso Ciampa onto that ladder, but... Two ladders here, two tables inside of the ring. I'm, I'm still curious what that long ladder there, what someone's going to do with that. Champa brought it out. That would, you would think, would be the ideal ladder to climb to try and retrieve the tag team titles, but kind of lingering out there for the moment. This is definitely one match where there is no champion's advantage here for Gallows and Anderson. I mean, anything... Obviously, anything can go. They've really got to, you know, this is going to be the, the ultimate test for this, for this team. And right now Champa hammering away here at Luke Callas. This very, well this very well could be one of the longest matches on the card tonight. Well, it's so difficult when there's oh, so a... many bodies and you have to take your time climbing each rung of the ladder, let alone try and release that clasp that has the title belts hanging above the ring with that amount of time that you have to take plenty of opportunity for anybody to be able to get in and stop you so yeah to your point uh, might be one of the longer matchups of the night but certainly when you take into account everything that takes place and being able to go up there and get those belts it certainly makes sense 
Lucala is dumped to the outside there by Johnny Gargano, but there's no ladder in the ring, amazingly enough. There's two tables, and now Gargano oh. just cracks Gallows with the head with a steel chair. That might not necessarily be a bad thing. The last two pay-per-views, we've seen Gallows and Anderson retain their titles, but man, their their faces were crimson in both of those matches. We now have three ladders in this match. Who's big tides? Gargano just took the ladder away from Gallows. Oh gosh! I think Gallows and uh Vinci, is that the last name I believe you said it was? Giovanni Vinci? Giovanni, Giovanni, Giovanni Vinci. Vinci. Yes. Yeah, so they, for the moment, almost looks like they got a bit of an alliance here. And as soon as I say that, Gallo's going to send Vinci up the rampway. Meanwhile, we've got two tables set up in the ring, a ladder set up on the outside of the ring, and two ladders just laying, well, now one ladder just laying on the outside of the ring. And a part of the pear tree. Let's say those tables aren't tall enough to reach the uh, title belts. Maybe for Luke Gallo's, but that's about it. We got uh, three ladders, two tables, one chair. Oh my! Oh boy, I believe that was a uh, the Kaiser that just bounced off the steel ring post. Hear that reverberating through this arena? Gargano's. Gargano's just, I, I'm a little surprised Gargano's taking his time just standing in the ring. But, but at this point, since nobody notices him, he could have grabbed a ladder and gotten up there and gotten the titles by now. Now a ladder finally being put into the ring there. It's like, smaller ladder. It's like Vinci br brought one in and trying to decide where he wants to take Gargano, but Gargano was able to fight out of the grasp there. And oh my oh. God! Did you hear that? Oh, the Kaiser again, and there's the uh, rings of Saturn. Rings of Saturn, yeah. rings of Saturn submission, but submissions don't matter in this in this match. Well, they don't matter, but they can certainly have your opponent down long enough to be able to climb up that ladder. So very smart. Try and see if he can maybe. Have uh, oh, said, boy. Giovanni Luke, Vinci pass out. Luke the Kaiser, I don't know what he did to piss everybody off outside, but we've seen him bounce off the steel ring post twice. Now he just bounced off that ladder that was, that was wedged in between the barricade and the ring. And I might be wrong, but I think Kaiser's been busted open after that uh, combination oh. ring post to ladder. Oh, Gargano, Gargano. Oh, my oh. God. And the table, okay? Imperium. Yeah, oh, and there, down goes Gargano. Down goes Gargano. Gallows now going to the starting to climb the ladder. But Gargano right back up. Gonna watch him. Gallows has really been the only one so far. Now twice has climbed up to the top of the ladder and had his hands now on I'm the belt. Now Imperium. I don't know how those guys are still standing. Oh they God! Team together puts the ladder down. I mean. They really didn't even push the ladder down. They collapsed the ladder, and then both Gallows and Gargano fell. Rather unique. Usually, you end up seeing them push a ladder over to get the opponent oh off. Oh my so lord! See them fold the ladder back up. Carl Anderson and Tommaso Ciampa fighting on the outside. Everybody else inside the ring, and Boy Anderson oh. had thoughts of putting oh, Gargano. Ludwig Kaiser. What Ludwig Kaiser got? We can't see it. Oh my lord, but Gargano through the table. Eyes are up to the ladder. What? Where is he going? Oh! oh. <laughs> down! That's where he's going. Down. Say down. That's where he's going. Carl Anderson's face just bounced off that ladder on the outside. And... There goes Vici over the top rope, so he won't be in the Royal Rumble. This match does not lack destruction, that is for sure. Absolutely not. Oh, oh, oh. Rings of Saturn. The lock. The no, that's the LaBelle lock. Oh, that is right. That is the LaBelle lock. Gargano, the master of submissions over here. Eyes are wailing away on Luke Gallows. Is that Champa there up on the top of the ladder? Well, it was. It was. <laughs> Again, one thing I've been noticing, as Christopher said it earlier, is this one person climbs the ladder, everyone stops what they're doing. Oh, not really sure where he wants to go on the outside. He keeps going underneath the ladder. Uh, I think he's just having fun. I, th I, I think he's just having fun. How low can you go? 
Oh, I guess he's changed his mind. Carl Anderson is now the IWE Limbo Champion. Tommy I don't, Gargano you don't get a title belt for that, but you get called a champion. Oh! Cal was getting sent into the corner, and there was a ladder set up there, so he made some contact with the steel. But well, not necessarily steel, the ladders are aluminum. Mike like climbing up top there, it's like, uh... That's Giovanni Vinci. Giovanni Vinci, well, he was up there, not for long, as... DIY, together, working it together. Really steel, so it still could be considered steel. Anyway, I'm overthinking this. Yes, yes you are. Oh, I don't know what happened there. One member of each team, well, we had one member of each team in the ring, now we have... Both members of DIY back in. Now both and members of Imperium. And now everybody. Well, oh, uh oh. Now. What's Champa have in mind here? Oh, no, Tommaso, what is he? Doing? Oh my lord, what a what a moonfall as as Giovanni Vinci trying to unhook the belt. Well, Carl Anderson trying to stop him. Oh, his tag team partner just got eliminated on the outside there. Oh! Watch Anderson. Is he too far away? No, he's got his hands on the belt. Carl Anderson's got his hands on the belts. Campa's trying to get to him. Oh, now he's trying to get caught by him getting distracted. Oh, no, the ladder's gone. Now, oh, Carl Anderson in a bad spot. Oh, oh, I think his leg may have bounced off the ladder on the way down. About the closest anybody's gotten to him. Latching those belts. Oh, Gargano! Gargano, <laughs> Gargano said, thanks, teammate! Very very quickly, getting up there to the top. Oh, well, well, where's he going? Never mind, he decided to reach the title belts. They're kind of swung away from him. Oh! Yeah, it was Kaiser that just knocked the ladder down. Uh, yeah, boy, an interesting sure that way to. The ladder landed on Gargano's back of his head. Oh, gosh, look, that ladder just had a poltergeist take control of it or something. Gallows, he's already dead. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's just tea time here on Johnny Gargano. Uh-oh, uh-oh, look at this, look at this. Uh, that's Tommaso's finishing move. Now can he get a ladder in the ring? Oh, he's got a ladder in the ring. They're just beating Johnny Gargano like he owes him money. I mean, my God, this is... Tampa's gonna be all by himself. Oh, he's got the title belt. Stirring. Oh! oh he bomb. just missed. He just missed the just missed the ladder on that power bomb. And now a submission by of his own. Oh, oh with the not cross face. Sure I agree with Carl Anderson breaking up that submission. I'm not sure why you do that. I think it's just it every. I think everyone's just. That was in the submission. Oh, look at this! End of days. Oh, here comes another table. Well, we've had two tables murdered so far tonight. Why not a third? Oh, and another end of days. How has Luke Gallows been trading with Baron Corbin? I mean, geez. Oh, well, that's two people eliminated. Well, both both the DIY. DIY. <laughs> Deposited on either ends of the ring. And everybody left the ring there for a split second, but then they decided, wait, but we need to be in here if we want to win. Oh! Now you've got Kaiser, both members of the Bullet Club in there. Here comes Vici. Well, I thought he was going to come into the ring with a chair, but instead he's going to wail away on the far side there on Tommaso Ciampa. And just thinking to try to get to the. Oh, look at. Gargano's got his leg. And now Kaiser on the other side. going to try to do it. Everyone just now notices. Oh, it's so difficult to be able to undo that latch. So much time for somebody to notice, get up there, and just about everybody that's gone up there to the top oh, of the Gallo ladder has had a very oh, bad Oh, right to the back, the back of Gargano's head. Gargano's head was between the chair and the ladder because he was holding the ladder at the time. 
But that was payback there. I think Gargano did the same thing to uh, Luke Gallows early oh, on. In the match. Right on the table. Uh, I can't. I can't say both of these teams are fighting with their hearts to try to get the title belt. Uh oh, Tommaso's all by himself. What's he doing? He's on top of the. I'm, I'm not sure. Oh my oh, lord! Gosh, and he just. Oh, I think he landed. He... On that knee, that right knee. Oh. Now Carl Anderson. Anderson got it. Now here comes Tampa. Oh, Anderson might steal it here. Champa, what is he doing? He might have it. What is Champa doing? Champa, you gotta. You gotta do something. Him. Why are you watching him, Champa? Oh, here comes the other one. He's gonna do something at least. Boy, I mean, you can tell these guys are just spent. Tomasa and Champa can barely, you know, barely Arcano, hit him. Arcano. Arcano. Can he get it? Close. Peachy's gonna go up the other side. Will it be in time though? Oh, just barely. Just barely in time to stop Gargano. Oh, he's trying, he's still trying. Has <laughs> Meanwhile, the Bullet Club just watching. Yeah, I guess they're waiting to. Line and wait, why not? Talk about these oh, guys my being spent. Take a little bit of a respite. Wait and see if you absolutely have to get up there and stop them from getting the belts. You know, it, 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 it's the puzzle minigame. It's the puzzle minigame that you have to do when you're up there to try to um, to try to get the belts loose. And, you know, for all we know, they could have just been standing back, letting them do all the hard uh -oh. work for them to come in and take it. Well, the champions the team, outside I think the, the ring and I think DIY the next team to get, to get to the, I think the next team to get up there is going to get the belts here. It might be DIY. Uh, Goes Gargano. Gargano to the top. And, and Gargano back down to the bottom. Down. <laughs> you, it's hard to escape the gallows. Even climbing a ladder, you're still in arm's reach. Now the ladder, no longer in the center of the ring. Everyone is back inside the ring. Everybody is in, yeah. I mean, now. Goes Champa. Up to the outside. There went uh, Gallows, Gallo. I believe. Anderson, and now it's just Imperium. It is. Great opportunity here. Gallows being, beginning to stir on the outside. He's got a table. Champa in the ring. Gargano in the ring. Vinci. Vinci's got it. Is this going to be it right here? Oh! Got knocked off the ladder. Quite. Wow, these guys are fighting for this championship. I think Gallows is going to try to steal it from one side. That looks like you got one member of each team that's standing right now. Kaiser for both. You got both DIY. Why, yeah, now Champa fighting back. He was in a bad way there, though, just moments Our ago. Man, I'm going to take time to gloat in this match. You're trying to save the Champa. Come on, you guys. What are you doing? Oh, gosh. Nice drop kick there by Gargano. This is, type, this is the type of match. You get your opponents down. You don't gloat. You climb to the top of that ladder. You try to get the title belt. You don't waste time like that. Can be no wasted motion. You're right. Oh, Gallows, and over the top rope, and there he goes. Nice drop kick there by Champa. Not Champa Not sure. just the elbow drop. Not sure why Vici's over there on the, the far side. Why, Champa. Is, why isn't he inside Champa. the ring? Champa's got the belt. He's got him. He's got him. Is he going to be able to get it? Is he going to be able to do it? Oh, comes Gallows. Gallows trying to we come in. Time. He's trying to get something here. No. And that's it. DIY. First time for both Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano, who past couple of months have been ch chasing singles gold. First time IWE Tag Team Champs. What, what a match. I mean... Amazing to say the least. You know, the Gargano busted open just a little bit here. Instant classic coded by these fans, and well, 
you know, Christopher and Kyle, we're gonna switch gears here. Up next is our United States Championship match, and yet another Extreme Rules. It's just keep on coming. I mean, my goodness, the wrestlers certainly spent after that uh, triple threat tag team ladder match, and uh, whew, <laughs> gotta get our second wind here because we still got about half the pay per view to go. Completely agree. Uh, here comes an, a very interesting challenger for the United States title. He's a guy that's no stranger to, to the United States Championship one in WWE. Don't believe he's ever held it in IWE. Nope, and I don't believe Seth Rollins has ever held the world title here either. I don't think Seth Rollins has held any title in under the IWE brand. Don't think well, that's he has hard to either. believe. We saw last month Charlie Buxton, I think, I think it was his second in-ring appearance, and walked out as the new United States Champion, but... Beating Dylan Posey. Yeah, so he's going to have a tall task here in his first title defense against Seth Rollins. Mention the fact, too, that that United States Championship, it, it's kind of been the, the hot potato title here of IWE. Nobody's really been able to hang on to it for very long. It's been bounced around quite a bit here this uh, past year. No, AJ Styles. Since AJ Styles lost it, it has been, yeah. yeah. Charlie Buxton, nicknamed the Dragon, but last after last week was re-nicknamed to the IWE United States Champion. It's quite the te quite the test in front of him here in the form of Seth Rollins. I thought that's been very impressive ever since. Uh, Ever since coming onto the scene here in IWE, as you mentioned, defeated our own Dylan Pote to win the IWE United States Championship, I believe, in our last pay per view. Yep. And if you, if you guys noticed, I'm sure by now the lack of Dylan Pote at the commentary booth because he's actually in the back mentally preparing himself, mentally and physically preparing himself for his World Championship rematch DLC match later on tonight. Well, things seemed a little too professional out here. Well, what we saw out of Charlie Buxton last month, I would say that we're going to be looking at two individuals here with somewhat similar wrestling styles. So it'll be interesting to see who's going to be able to gain the advantage and keep the momentum going because I kind of feel like this is going to be very much so a back and forth type match. I agree. Well, see who's going to come out of the gate strong here. Buxton and Seth Rollins. Ernest Wright going to call for the bell, and here we go. Well, we ended up seeing the women's championship earlier tonight defended in an extreme rules match, and the champion going in was not the champion going out. So you have to wonder if that's weighing on the mind of Charlie Buxton with the Extreme Rules. The championship, uh, the champion's advantage pretty much goes out the window. Yeah, and Buxton coming out of the gate strong here. I think I know the real reason we've had two, two matches and two titles so far. As mentioned, Dylan Pope <laughs> not here on commentary. Yeah, that's very true. Buxton now, look at this. Reverse CDT. Oh, went for a knee, went to drop the knee there, and Rollins able to get out of the way. I think the first bump John Cena's taken tonight. Is it a bump to John Cena if they move out of the way, or is it just a bump to John Cena if they go for a move and completely miss? John Cena's such a humanitarian, he takes a bump for everybody. He took the bump so Buxton didn't look foolish. Oh, he didn't take the bump there, just a hard right hand there. No. Now Rollins coming up empty there, so 
Yeah, you mentioned the similar wrestling styles for Cena exactly. right there. And Rollins eliminated from the Royal Rumble. Out to the outside of the ring. Anything out here to your advantage? And we saw earlier the weaponry. Well, we saw it in, in both of our matchups, the weaponry oh. that's underneath the ring. We might be running low on tables, though. Yeah, after our last match. Ladder two. Let's see what Seth Rollins is able to find here. He comes up with a baseball bat. Oh, gosh. You can hear that. Oh, my gosh. Oji could tell us what that feels like. I really can. And then, once again, somebody bouncing off a steel ring because this time it was oh. Seth Rollins. Now, Buxton using the baseball bat to his advantage. Just heard the crowd chant. We just heard the crowd chant, we want tables. Goodness gracious, didn't they get enough of them in the last match? Oh, Rollins peeing off in the corner. Nice. Rollins was walking gingerly. Some of those baseball bat shots were somewhat close to his manhood. Right to his knee. That's not where your manhood is there, Jimmy, but you know what? No, that, it wasn't. I watched clearly a frog splash there by Rollins. Goes for the cover. New U.S. champion. I don't know where the ref was. Wow. No, Boy, I saw him. If him and Becky are playing on having any more kids, that might be in jeopardy after that shot there, but... Oh, I'm not sure what Rollins is thinking here. Oh, he went for the knee. Oh. No, he didn't miss. Oh, oh RKO! Oh. Did he, he just countered the curb stomp. He, he did countered the curb stomp into an RKO. And now, and now the, there's the dragon plunge. Reminds me a lot. Of, there's a cover there. Rollins able to kick out. Boy, that counter into the RKO. Shades of WrestleMania 31 when Randy Orton was able to do. That's a perfection. Oh. That was a stunner by Buxton. And that, I thought he was going to go for a cover there. Drags him back up. Oh, he's gonna go for it again. He's going Great for the there, Dragon Rollins. Plunge. Dragon Plunge, is that enough to put Rollins away? And it is. Yeah. Wow, that is impressive there by Charlie Buxton. And all it took was one reversal from a curve bump. Yeah, what a sequence there by Charlie Buxton. No chance, and, and Rollins ticked off. <laughs> oh, oh, I'll say he's ticked off. Referee is right. I'll, I'll bet that was because of that. Two count earlier, because I honestly think that if Referee Ernest Wright had been in position, we might have had a new champ. I think Rollins thinks he got robbed. Boy, wait, this might not be over here between Charlie Buxton and Seth Rollins. We'll have to see here, but uh, Buxton oh. with the belt once again. Absolutely not. Rollins angry. I'm sure there'll be some fines coming up for that. Because, you know, I. Telling them that Noah Zebra was not abused. IW has got to make their money somehow. Address, which is here over to our Intercontinental Championship match. Edge has been holding on to that title for a couple of months now. And he's going to face off against a brand new challenger, someone who I believe is making their IWE debut. With all that being LA Knight. I just have heard Australia has good health insurance after that. I, that was a hell of a shot there from Seth Rollins. I agree. If I can correct you, Jimmy, I think this is his second appearance in IWE LA Night. I believe he was actually involved in that uh, that Fatal Four we were talking about that Champa was in. Uh, that's very true. This year. That's very true. Well, the uh, medical the medical doctor attended to Ernest Wright, and they said he is okay. Yeah. There's a man that has never lacked confidence in his life, I'm willing to bet. L.A. Knight, hey. very confident on the mic, and he, he's got the wrestling to back it up, but I kind of wonder, he's got experience, but not nearly the experience as the Rated R Superstar. It'll be interesting to see here tonight if the confidence he's exuding right now, if it's actually going to help him against Edge, because we know it doesn't matter how much confidence you've got coming into a matchup. That spear hits you from out of nowhere, and very rarely do we see anybody kick out. That's very true.
You think you know me? All too familiar music. And there he is, Intercontinental Champion. Hey, wait, you mentioned his entrance music right there, Metal Inc. Middle Angus by Alter Bridge, a great song, and let's take back to a couple of years ago when we heard that music hit at the 2020 Royal Rumble, and I don't think I've heard the crowd react that way in a long, long time, and just what an amazing run Edge has been on since that, since that amazing moment. Edge the current Intercontinental Champion, former IWE World Champion, we'll, we'll see that belt defended in a little bit. You mentioned it though, Jimmy. Edge has been on a, quite a bit of a run after he captured the IC title. Almost kind of starting to, in a way, challenge AJ Styles, his United States Championship run in terms of longevity. Oh yeah, absolutely. He's approaching it. Approaching it very quickly, but at the same time, he's still got to focus and get through LA Knight. And again, in case it wasn't said, this is going to be yet another Extreme Rules match. We've ended up seeing one title change hands here tonight in singles competition with the Women's Championship. One title retained, though we didn't see a whole lot of uh, weapons used in the United States Championship match. And then, oh boy, I'll tell you what, if you're, if you're tuning into our pay-per-view now, we appreciate it, but you missed out on a heck of a TLC triple threat ladder match. I completely agree. Yes, you sure did. An instant classic, and now as you see Edge in control of LA Knight here in the early goings. Oh, Ooh. nice. Uh, it's like a modified sidewalk slam there by LA Knight. And like we've been saying too, with the extreme rules aspect of this match, not necessarily champion's advantage here. No counters, there's no disqualifications. I need right in oh, such a side of head. It's the collarbone region, which would be right up around the neck. You know that Edge in the past has had neck injuries. Edge goes for That's a quick cover. Edge coming out of the gate very strong here. Ali Knight did a great job blocking those fists with his face. Sure did. A brave approach there, not the way I'd want to block something, but I don't know what that was, but it looked good. And now LA Knight hammering away at Edge and slamming his face into the canvas. Oh! Nice springboard there by Knight, and looks like he's in control right now. Oh, and a nice neck breaker going right after the, the weakened neck of Edge and into a cover now. And it's a near fall out of it. Two things I saw right there. One, Ernest Red again, rather slow to the cover, but LA Knight took his time. Oh, wait a minute, that, that was too. LA Knight's finisher. Here's a cover. And that's oh, it. got it. LA Knight is able to hit a finisher out of nowhere. I mean, Not we sure were hyping up the, the spear out of nowhere, and LA Knight, holy cow. Oh, what's going on here? And wow. Oh. Wow, I mean, I think, uh, I think the rules were reversed a little bit there. I wasn't, wasn't really expecting to sign a sportsmanship out of LA Knight. And I certainly wasn't expecting Edge to, uh, you know, to have that kind of reaction, but... Average, an average overall match rated by the fans. And now, guys, we're switching gears. It's time. Can Pochi put his money where his mouth is and regain the world title that is hanging above the ring right now? It's, it's not. It's, it's no fun to make fun of him when he's not here to sit when he's not here or can't cannot hear it. Well, I mean, we really. Can we really make fun of him, though? Remember, he did beat The Undertaker. Look, it's F hard. Um, wow, that could be taken in a number of different ways here, but now we definitely, to... now we definitely need to have uh, Seth Rollins get fined because we're making no money on this video. 
don't yeah. make any money on any video. What is money? Baby, don't hurt me. <laughs> Baby, don't pay me. This is, this anyway! Is this is extremely interesting for uh, Dylan Poteet going up against his hero, as you can see by his Titantron. Going up against Jeff Hardy, of all people, here for the IWE Championship. I should make this match far more better. You mentioned the fact this is a TLC match. I mean, do and we even need match? to talk about the resume of Jeff Hardy and uh, TLC yeah, matches? But yeah, you if you consider Dylan Poteet and, and wondering how he'll do in this match, remember, he ended up defeating Big E in a tables match. I know it's entirely different rules on how to win that matchup, but still, you know, he's familiar with using the furniture underneath and outside of the ring. Yeah, TLC match, a match that is, I guess you could say is tailored made there for Jeff Hardy. I mean, hell, he's made a career out of matches like this. And uh, again, like, what is the psyche of Dylan Poteet right now? I mean, like, he's in the ring, he's going to be in the ring with his hero in a match that, you know, Jeff Hardy just, I don't want to say he's dominated in his career, but I mean, he's had so much success and he's made so many, he's had so many moments in him either TLC or a ladder type match so it's gonna, it's gonna be an, it's definitely gonna be an interesting one I don't know who it was that said it can't recall who the name was but they said you never want to meet your heroes I think that this is the exact opposite chance to for Dylan Pote to see if he can go toe to toe with one of the greatest in TLC history if he's up to the task, he's gonna have to beat the hell out of his hero in order to uh, he is. In order to win this match. So, and how difficult must that be if you're looking at Jeff Hardy across the ring and realizing that you're gonna have to wear this guy down? You're gonna have to basically, you know, beat him within an inch of his life so that way he's not able to stop you going up there and retrieving that title belt. I mean, gotta be a huge mixture of emotions right now. Both he looking Dylan very focused. And if Dylan Poteet's able to win this match, technically he would be a two-time IWE champion. First first title, right, of course. Uh, last in about a minute or two. Yeah, exactly. Until Cody Rhodes came in and cashed in and walked out with the belt. Well, one move Just in, like and Jeff Hardy already goes for a chair. Uh, Dylan Poteet says, nah, bro. Less than a minute in, the crowd already wants tables. Oh, instead they're going to settle with the ladder. Well, Dylan Poteet, a lot of his moveset fashioned after Jeff Hardy. We ended up seeing the similarity of styles earlier tonight with Seth Rollins and Charlie Buxton. You've got to wonder, you know, just how similar is this going to look between these two individuals? You'd have to think maybe almost mirror image. I agree. Oh my lord. He's going for a side Russian leg sleep instead of slamming Jeff Hardy up against the barricade. Oh, Jeff Hardy is down. Pochi can try to get into the ring with the ladder. Now, guys, we saw the tag team triple threat ladder match earlier. It might be a little bit easier to strategize in this matchup because you only have to worry about one other opponent. In the other matchup, you had to worry about five other opponents. So. And they're both going on the ladder. Oh boy, Hardy's smacking Poteet's uh, oh, head wow. right off the top of the ladder and Poteet paying him back. Oh, right hands by Dylan Poteet. Of course, what does he say? That here, here it comes. These two fighting on top of the ladder. Just trading shots from each other here. Something's got to give. And... Oh! Jeff's well, teetering Jeff and just down. down. And now Poteet with an opportunity. All by himself. Plenty of time right now with Hardy down and out on the ring. That. Right. He's got it. But Dylan Poteet trying to get it. Poteet making some progress here, but not Jeff Hardy. Back on his feet and Poteet in a bad spot. And 
And not only did that give Dylan Pote time to be able to try and unlock that briefcase, the the briefcase, but that that latch there, but it gave Jeff Hardy a lot of time and to Jeff be able to Gordon recover. To for Swan Con. Now Dylan's in the middle of the ring. Where is Jeff going to be able to set up the ladder to be able to climb? Hey, he said no. Yeah, I think, I think he no. just discovered that. We get a table instead. Crowd's going to be happy about that. That was impressive. The ability to be able to just in two leg sweeps Ooh. be able to kick the legs out of that table. I have hard enough time tipping the thing upside down and getting the legs to to go down. Oh, are you going to give us exactly what this mismatch is named? A table, ladder, table, and a chair? Ladder, oh, a chair uh, Canadian destroyer. destroyer. Out of nowhere. But Jeff Hardy's not Canadian. Well, neither are still in Pote, so why is... <laughs> right to the back and the knee there. Oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, oh what's he thinking? Oh, oh no, Pote with the oh, reversal. Out of it. If he was going for a razor's edge, perhaps. Uh oh, look at this. Well, Jeff Hardy's been known to do that a time or two. Imitation's the greatest, for the, uh, greatest, the greatest form, form of, of flattery. Flattery, yeah. Oh wow, I thought he was going for an angle slam. <laughs> oh, oh my! Gosh. Hardy landed on his head and I. <laughs> Again. Oh, what's Posey thinking? No, oh, Dylan, Dylan, think about this. Think about this. Oh, my What a God. splash. Samoan splash onto Jeff Hardy. The crowd chanting, this is awesome. Posey, the only one standing as he's going to try to unhook this, this belt and win the title. Again, though, Jeff Hardy getting valuable time to be able to recover, maybe get a second wind. We'll see. Well, see, it was making some good progress there again, Kyle, but now, but I did messing up right at the end. Yeah, now Jeff Hardy taking advantage of it here, setting him up for a power bomb right off the ladder. Wait, did you see Pochi just bounce right off the ring? My gosh. What's Jeff Hardy thinking here? Not going to the ladder, waiting for Pochi to get to his feet. Yeah, it's funny. We've ended up seeing Pote twice now go up to the top of the ladder. Jeff Hardy's made, made really no attempt to climb the ladder yet. Maybe he's letting Pote, you know, kind of loosen it up there, just making it easier for him whenever he does take a chance to go to to climb up there. But he's gonna Pote, go at it again, Pote. He's gonna, he's gonna get the title itself. Hardy's well, Hardy was down. Latch more than halfway undone. Oh gosh, another hard landing there for Dylan. But I mean, is, is is there a good landing when you fall from the top of the ladder? Probably not. I don't think so. And boy, that was a hard shot right there. I think that just busted uh, Putin open. Oh God, I, if not, then this these chair shots definitely will. Goodness. Look at the dent in the chair. Want to have a bust of Dylan Neal? Oh, it's gone. Cranium, then uh, yeah, you could just use that chair as a mold. Already taking the ladder down. Is he going to rearrange oh, well. it there? Yeah, repositioning it looks uh, like. Well, no. it's not to his liking. Already wasting a lot of precious time. Once again, deciding not to climb it. I'm almost wondering if he was positioning it for an offensive move rather than to climb up. Oh wait a minute, what is this? Oh, oh my God! Look at Jeff. Jeff has Pote outside the ring. Smart move there by, by Hardy. He's got all the Long time in the world now. ways away from the ladder. Yeah, you're right. And Jeff Hardy capitalized. Dylan Pote now to his feet. Getting back into the ring. and has a sight set on Jeff Hardy. Well, you know, you think about it too, guys. Depending on how much punishment you do to an opponent, I mean... Uh oh. That can affect just how long it's going to take for them to undo that latch. You saw Jeff Hardy when he was up at the top. A little, little fiddly there. Only, I think, was able to unlatch one of the sections as. Oh! John Pote. Cena takes the body splash. Yeah, Poti comes up empty. Might be looking Canadian Destroyer again. Oh, he's trying to dump him outside the ring, maybe? Yes, he is. That's exactly what he's doing, Hardy. Dump Hardy outside the ring outside. now. 
Posey gonna climb the ladder all by himself inside the ring. But Hardy back to his feet. He's already back up. How in the world is he back up this quickly? Taking his time. Oh, and look at this. Posey got it. Wow. Oh my lord. Two-time IWE champion. And this time he doesn't have to worry about a cash and he can actually no, enjoy this one. Blood running down the running down his nose right around his right eye. No, you a said he was taking a one to mentally prepare for this thing and deciding not to do commentary with us. It paid off. Absolutely. My goodness. Very, very good. It was a very good match rated by the fans. Dylan Poti, two-time champion. Gentlemen, next up is the Royal Rumble, and that is going to be fun. Thank you guys so much for joining us, and we'll see you at the Royal Rumble. Both these guys can't be in it. They were both over the top rope.